Hello again everyone and welcome back to Trick Bricks. I'm Jamie, and today we're going to continue our Adventures Retrospective series by taking a look at set number 5925, Pontoon Plane. Released in 1999, it contains 72 pieces, one minifigure, and retailed for $6 in the US. I've got the instructions here, featuring the box art on the front, and if we flip it over, we'll find a few more shots of the plane, and two alternate builds that transform this set from flying to floating. One thing I always liked about the jungle instruction manuals was the fact that they not only featured the build steps inside, obviously, but some additional artwork and photography of the set. But let's put this aside and get to the reason you're all here. We all know the Adventures series is chock full of awesome vehicles, and we certainly can't have a season without an airplane of some sort. But the pontoon plane has some interesting design cues we won't find elsewhere in the theme. Beginning up front, we've got a small windshield for the pilot to see through, and a pretty sleek looking nose thanks to these wedge bricks. The color scheme used here and throughout the plane was an interesting choice, I think and I'm still questioning whether or not it would have looked better to have the fuselage of the plane be more uniform in color. To me, the brown and tan together give it kind of a weathered, run-down look, but maybe that's what they were shooting for. Speaking of shooting, as we continue moving rearward, we won't find any rifles mounted on the wings, which, while pretty unrealistic, is kind of a staple of adventurers' planes. Instead, we've got two props here, and I like how the designer approximated engines with these rounded bricks and slope pieces. Simple, but effective. I also like how the top and bottom wings are different widths, with the top overhanging by just a few studs. You've got a pair of struts on each side, and below we'll find the pontoons this plane is named after. Again, these are pretty simple in their construction, but we know exactly what they're meant to represent. As you can see, there's not much else going on down here, so let's check out the cockpit area. On either side of the cockpit, right behind the engines, you've got a shovel and a pickaxe stored for use after landing. And you even have a few translucent red studs hidden under here to represent lights. Inside, the cockpit itself is fairly straightforward. A flight yoke and a place to sit, which in reality is pretty much all we need. The rear of the fuselage tapers down nicely into the tail section, where we'll find the stabilizers and tail fin. Like everything else about this plane, it's all pretty basic, but there is one more thing to see, and it's my favorite part of the build. If we jump back into the cockpit, you might notice this little gap behind the seat. To get a better look, we can pull off this wedge piece to reveal... The hidden storage compartment, complete with a revolver and dynamite tile. <laughs> Alright, maybe I'm being a little dramatic and it's not actually supposed to be hidden, but it's still pretty cool nonetheless. It would have been easy for the designer to fill this area in with bricks and plates and leave it at that, but I really appreciate this little area. You could even smuggle out a sun disc using this space, if you've got one. But to do that, we're going to need an experienced pilot, someone who knows flying like the back of his bright yellow hand. And who better than Harry Kane, my second favorite adventure behind only the great Johnny Thunder himself. He's wearing the same bomber jacket and flight cap with goggles we saw in the Egyptian theme, and his facial expression is as devil may care as ever. Such a classic character and a bit underutilized in my opinion. Besides the tools and weapons on his plane, he's also got a pair of binoculars for scanning the horizon. And that's about it, boys and girls. Much like the subject of our last episode, this set probably isn't going to find itself winning many all-time greatest awards, but I hardly think it was intended to do so. This was designed to be a simple, affordable way for kids to get in on the adventure, and in that respect, I think it's a winner. Sure, there are a ton of awesome LEGO planes, bigger, sleeker, and more full-featured, but sometimes I think we adult fans get so lost in high piece counts and complex build techniques that we lose sight of why a set like this exists. I'm sure there was a kid out there, back in 1999, 
whose mom or dad couldn't afford anything bigger than this, and that kid probably enjoyed it more than most of us could ever understand. And to him or her, this little set just may have been the all-time greatest. So, in the age of 7,000 plus piece Millennium Falcons, let's not be so quick to overlook the little guys. I know they were an important part of my childhood. And luckily, you can still get this set for a fairly reasonable price, about 10 or 12 bucks used, and around $20 new. So if you think you or someone you know might like it, it's not going to put too much strain on your wallet. But that's all I've got for you today. If you enjoyed this review, feel free to give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll be back soon with the next installment in the Adventures Retrospective series. But until then, this has been Jamie for Trick Bricks. As always, thanks for watching, take care, and play well!